Hello there, my YouTube family, and some of you that probably aren't my YouTube family. So today, uh, we're going to be talking about Moto Madness, and specifically kind of like a message from Moto Madness and from me to kind of clarify where things are going with his channel and, and how things work with his channel. Uh, so. If you're watching this, I'm gonna go ahead and assume you already know who Moto Madness is. And there's been a lot of change with this channel recently uh, with how things are formatted and such like that. So for those of you that don't know, Moto Madness channel was demonetized. And the reason it was demonetized was uh, for reuse content, which is a little ambiguous because the process that he takes for it isn't just copy and paste, let me steal people's you know, content for my own profit, which is what a lot of people think uh, from a lot of the comments that I've seen. So we're gonna go over a couple things about this, <clears throat> explaining the new format, why it's like that, and then kind of giving you some information on the channel itself that might clarify some things because a lot of you seem to think that it's just a piece of cake job and you know, he just makes money off other people's content and chills in a lazy boy all day and smokes his fucking pipe or some shit, like some fat ass white CEO for some major corporation, essentially. <laughs> uh, so let's start off with topic number one here. This channel, or his channel, is not copy and paste. It is not. Uh, it takes a lot, a lot of work to get this going. From submissions from people, to uh, copyright strikes, to reviews, to research, to editing, to everything. And not on, I mean, even on top of that, trying to conform to YouTube's rules to do it, to the point of, making multiple different edits for different videos to keep monetization, which is now gone. So it's not just copy and paste. It's an, and from everything he's talking to me about, it's an over 40 hour a week type job. Um, it goes from the time that he wakes up to the time that he sleeps, you know, and he just had a baby boy and shit like that, man. And it's not an easy, just nine to five type job. A lot of work goes into this channel, or his channel, sorry, I'm gonna act like it's my fucking channel. A lot of work goes into that channel, uh, to the point that he's like, it's not uncommon to dream about it, it's not uncommon to always be worried about it, the stress, the headaches, everything. You know, and it's, like I said, you, a lot of you people think that it's just copy and paste, make money, have a good day. That is not the way that it is, whatsoever. Now. Number two, let's talk about that new format we got going on with Dave as a host, uh, more more texting on him, more explaining what's going on, more talking. Um, there's a lot of people that voice that they don't like it, and even the whole, oh, I'm leaving, I'm unsubscribing. Dude, who the fuck cares? It doesn't matter. Have a good day. Dude, it doesn't matter. Like, why do people feel the need to be like, I'm unsubscribing to you? There's three point something million subscribers, dude. Bye. Have a good day. But the new format is something that is being forced upon him by YouTube right it's not something that one day he was just like hey what's up you know let's let's go ahead and do this why do people stare why do fucking people stare just <laughs> oh, hey anyways um it's not something that's like hey let's go ahead and do this he tried this back i believe he said in 2016 2017 tried to trial it um and it didn't work people had outcry on it but in this day and age there are certain things that need to happen for them for the channel to go on it can go on in this state you know it, it, it could go on the same thing but no one's going to be making money. And like I said previously, this isn't an easy thing. Um, he hired Dave on for this. And there's somebody else that works with him too. And it's a three-day turnaround process with the videos that are submitted, the videos that he asked to use, all that good stuff. Um, and it's, it's, it's something that has to be done, unfortunately. Um, so people that say they're leaving and stuff like that, okay, fine. But there are a lot more people out here that realize that it has to be done nonetheless um, and like I said it's been done before Ronald Manis realizes that this isn't the most ideal thing excuse me but he apologizes and this is YouTube so if you have a problem with it go talk to YouTube about it go tell them hey this is stupid the way it was before is great voice your concerns the more people that talk to him about it the better it'll be for everybody to go one person complaining is not going to change anything point number three that people put in the comments all the time. You're copying dirt bike lunatic. You're doing this with dirt bike lunatic. Blah blah blah. Okay, 
they've been friends for a long period of time. Anyone that's been with the channel for a long time, that's submitted stuff to the channel, that's worked with him, knows that Dirt Bike Lunatic and Moto Madness, they're not linked, they're not the same channel or anything like that, but they are friends. They've been friends for a long time. They started the channel right around the same time. Um, there's no copying each other going around. You know, being like, hey, they don't know each other. Oh, hey, I'll do this on his video because he did this on his video. No, they do know each other. They do work together on certain things. And that's the way it is. You know, if you've been in any business whatsoever for a long period of time, you're going to have friends in the business and you're going to work with certain people, period. That's the way it works. Any halfway intelligent person is going to know this. I ride motorcycles. I find people all over the country and especially in the city that ride motorcycles because we're in the same thing and we're friends. That doesn't mean that we're fucking in cahoots with each other with certain things. Kind of a sub thing of that one is, oh, you sold the channel to Dave, right? The host. Sold the channel to Dave. And some people even think that Dave is Moto Madness, but no. Two totally different people here. You sold the channel for Dave, to Dave. There was nothing being sold, okay? Maybe he sold the channel for a couple hundred dollars worth of Burger King vouchers. Who knows? But I can guarantee you, there's no nothing being sold. They work together. It's an employee type relationship, okay? Dave hooks it up with the hosting and stuff like that. And I'm sure he does more that I don't know about. But that's the way it is. Okay, so nobody sold the channel and like sold out or did this or did that. Moto Madness is one of the few YouTubers that I've seen that have pretty much stayed the same through the entire process, even after having millions of subscribers. Uh, a lot of people tend to change, a lot of people do things, and I've talked to him since way back in the day when I first started riding and first started putting a GoPro on my helmet. And we're talking about, shit, what is it now? I think it's like, I started doing that around 2016 or something? And so I've been with the channel for a long period of time as far as submitting stuff, and he's always been the same whenever I talk to him. And now that I talk to him on a more personal level about certain things, same exact dude. That's the way it is. Um, so there's been no selling of anything going on. It's all the same. It's just stuff that YouTube is making him do. Now, as far as the, the channel where it's going and stuff like that and, and what happened. And so he has silver play buttons, gold play buttons with letters, you know, that everybody gets once you get a certain milestone and stuff. And in the letters it says, hey, you're doing a good job. Keep going. You know, and it's, it's kind of like a, you need to get over, okay, fine. It's kind of like an employee relationship, right? Um, one day you're doing good, you're doing good, you're doing good, and then you come in one day and they're like, hey, sorry, standards have changed. Uh, we're not gonna pay you anymore. But you can keep working though, um, but you gotta do this, this, and this if you wanna do it. What would you do? Um, so standards have changed with it and he's trying to partner he's trying to speak with them and do things that any creator knows even if you're a big creator right it's hard as hell to talk to youtube about your channel and about what they want so like that because a lot of the times youtube doesn't even know they make certain rules and then you'll try to talk with them about something and they won't fucking co like communicate with you about shit because they're not even sure and i've dealt with this personally on certain things um, with content strikes and stuff like not strikes but claims you know, and it's it's it sucks. And YouTube needs to get their head out of their ass on certain things and talk with their creators. Because without the creators that have been doing this for a long period of time, YouTube would not be what it is. They need to realize that we are the ones that make YouTube the way it is. Ones that take time and make videos and do things. And to just cut somebody off that's been bringing in views and um, advertising and, and subscribers I mean, to your platform is ridiculous. At least talk with them. So what he's trying to do right now is he's trying to somehow set up a thing. What the fuck happened to your window, dude? He's trying to set up a meeting with YouTube to try to get remonetized and try to do what they want and to keep the channel going. Uh, me personally, I love you. I, I love Moto Madness. And it's, it's been something that I look forward to on a daily basis to watch his videos. Uh, and it's just, it would really, really, really suck to see something like this. It's been around for so long. It's been doing so good. Go down the drain because some CEO or some fucking suit in a office somewhere decided that they didn't want this to happen anymore. And they can't even talk with someone and have common courage to do that. And who knows, um, if things don't go right, <laughs> you might have to move to America and start using some Burger King vouchers and stuff to, to live. You know, you can come down to Tucson. People pull guns on people here apparently, for those of you who saw my last video, but hey, you can come down to Tucson. <laughs>
The last point that I see all the time that people are talking about is stealing videos, stealing content, stuff, which I deal with on a personal level because people steal my content all the time. I put strikes on people because they don't use, they don't do the, the they don't follow the proper process in order to be able to use my content. Okay. So he, it's a, and what you guys don't understand is with content creators, people that allow him to use his stuff, right? There's two ways the video gets on his channel. One, we send it in. Okay, I've sent in multiple videos. Um, now that I'm on a, a more personal level with him, it, it goes by a little bit different process than the average person. Um, but we send in videos to him, we fill out the form, and everything's legal, good to go, right? You have permission. Now, if YouTube comes at you and says, hey, what's up with this? Here's the form that this person filled out. They're the original owner of this content, and that's the way it works. The other one is he asks them, and you'll see in some people's videos, hey mate, would it be cool if I use this video and this blah, 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 you'll get credit. Cool, so those are the only two ways. There's never stealing videos, ever. Okay, and what you guys don't realize is it's a symbiotic relationship, okay? Meaning both people benefit from this relationship of it. He gets the views, he get, he's monetized, he gets you know the money, stuff like that, and it's kind of like an ad agency, if you will. This gets their name out to the public and a big platform, and they get subscribers, and that's how you grow your channel, right? The best way to grow your channel without partnering with like a company or something like that is to find a larger channel of whatever your content is and get them to feature your stuff and your name, right? That's the same reason why products you see on, on moto vloggers get you know sponsors because they have a huge platform and they want their product to be on their channel because people see it and go oh shit let me go check this stuff out that's how it works it's a symbiotic relationship no one's stealing anything back in the day like i think you said 2016 out of 17 they set up a licensing agency right he spent a lot of money i don't know if you really want me to tell a lot of money on a license, licensing agency, which are things like Viral Hog and stuff like that, right? Which I'm making a video on Viral Hog here in a minute because I really don't like them anymore. But uh, where they would buy your video, essentially, right? They get the rights for your video, so they would really they would own that video. That way, no matter what, it becomes their content instead of the whole YouTube reuse stuff. Uh, and it didn't work out, and he tried to start another channel, and it ended up getting shut down. And he almost lost Moto Madness because the two were linked together. Um, so, there's no stealing of content or anything like that. So what's going on right now with it is he's trying to set up, set it up to where he can do a 40 hour work week, a basic work week. He has Dave with him, he has somebody else with him. Um, get people to work with him as, as a company, get monetized, follow YouTube's, rule, YouTube's rules so it's not such a heartache and a headache on him with making things. Like I said, this is not an easy job. It is not an easy thing to do. Even me with my YouTube channel, where I'm not even making money on it, I do it as a hobby, it's really not an easy quote unquote thing to do. It takes time, it takes effort, um, it takes a lot of mental know-how and creativity, I guess if you will, to get this stuff up and running and to keep it going. Uh, a lot of people make YouTube channels and they die out within a year, they die out within five months, they die, you know, because people don't, they can't stand the mental stress of having to make content, um, deal with YouTube and stuff like that. So basically, what my hope is um, for everything is that this video clears up some things that you guys think. Uh, whether or not Moto Madness wants to use it or not is another thing, but these are things that I've talked with him about and things that I know as being a YouTube creator itself. I'm a small fish, but you still, everyone goes through the same things over and over again with YouTube and the same little barriers and trials and tribulations of it all. I hope this cleared some things up. If you're new to this channel, I really appreciate you staying by. I have ideas for other stuff that's gonna be happening. I'm gonna keep stuff rolling. And I think that'll do it today, my peeps. Come check out my Instagram, hef underscore 520 to stay in touch see what's going on outside of my life besides this and other than that i'll talk to y'all next time peace